Let us not forget everything that happens. It's by the will of Allah. Holy it's time to unite and stand, and we will be the best amongst men. It's not time to be extreme or duty unthinkable, but to stand together as one. Turn into sooner followers, streaming. Every day, various platforms, trust me, you'll find a way, soon the followers, you will make it through, the fifth is awakening you. With Quran and Sunnah by your side is a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. You will make it through. The fitra is awakening you. With Quran and Sunnah on your side is a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. With Quran and Sunnah on his side, here's a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. Ina alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Uh, welcome to our Akita class. And uh, for our Akita class, uh, we are covering the book entitled um, Diluting Wella Wellbera. And we've been focusing in on how to keep the fitra of the heart uh, nurtured so that the fitra of the heart can I hear you. Okay, can y'all hear me on YouTube? Yeah, okay, well, this, this must be Zoom. Okay, hold on. Uh, we've been speaking uh, for the past uh, a few, uh, the past week about what we can do uh, to keep the fitra nourished in our journey back towards Allah. So today what I want to do briefly, because we have another class, Mukhtar is going to be doing his class right on time at 7 p.m. because he has something to do. So I'm going to go right into my class so that Mukhtar can go right into his and then after Mukhtar's class, I have a, I want to talk about something that somebody asked me about. Okay, but for right now, I'm going to go directly to the book and we will be beginning with page 118 tonight. So I want everybody to take out the book, Diluting Wella Wellbera. Diluting Wella Wellbera and turn to page 118. And let me um, share... Uh, with the people that's on my uh, Zoom room first. Okay, and now I'm going to share with you guys. You'll see my um, screen, inshallah. I'm going to make it large so everybody can see. Okay. Okay, so tonight we are beginning with page 118. We'll be covering pages 118 through 120. We're going to speak about how the best way to nurture your the fitra of your heart so it can continue in its journey towards the law is by filling it with love, love for law. We've already spoken about things to do to awaken the fitra. So now that your inner light has been awakened, what do we do now? That's the question. What do we do? What do we do now? We've awakened the fitra of the heart. So we want to keep it awakened. We don't want it to go back to sleep. We don't want it to fall back into sin because these are the things that uh, destroy the fitra. Well, love for a law. Because love is the foundation of allegiance. Remember, it's all about proving that we believe in Allah and that our allegiance is to him. So love is the foundation of that. And also actions 
Uh, our and love not only is a foundation of allegiance, but it also acts as a distinguishing sign between those who are friends of the law and those who are not. You know, we're supposed to be living our lives trying to be alia of a law, friends of a law, not allies of shaitan. And we can rekindle the light within our heart and get rid of the ignorance of the religion and those evil emotions of loneliness, despair, and hatred by developing our love for Allah and his prophet and this religion and the believers. And it all begins, a lot of people ask the question, Sister Layla, what can I do to develop love for Allah? Well, it begins by recognizing his names and his attributes. That's why I teach you guys to ponder the names of Allah. Ponder the fact that he's more merciful than anything else. Ponder the reality that he told us not only what our purpose is in life, but he gave us the book, the guidance as to how to fulfill that purpose. All we have to do is learn it correctly. So this is how we establish that connection with Allah. And then we begin to grow spiritually. And then you will find out that you start doing the deeds, the obligations, not because you're obligated, but you do them because you want Allah to be pleased with you. You will wear your hijab. You will wear your abaya. You will make your prayers and all that because you want Allah to be pleased with you and you want his reward. So this love for Allah motivates you. It motivates each and every one of us to follow uh, the example of all the other prophets that came before us and to align ourselves with the other believers. You'll end up choosing better friends for yourself. You won't hang out with the people that you've been hanging out with who are weak in faith. And also, you're going to find yourself gravitating, trying to find an Islamic community. You want to migrate, move to a, another city or another country that has a stronger Islamic community. This is how we forge the bonds of love for Allah, which in turn causes us to forge the bonds of unity with other believers on earth. And that's where the true uh, meaning of well, I, well, better comes in. You will end up surrounding yourself with people who are more like you, who practice the religion and they practice it correctly. They have a great relationship with Allah. They fear his punishment. They're not people who go around blaming others for their uh, uh, mistakes and choices and shortcomings. Your heart becomes purified and your heart understands what its purpose is and it's eager you know, to fulfill it. So love for law. This is how we go about nurturing or feeding the fitra of the heart to keep it burning. And uh, Ibn Qayyim, you've heard me speak about him. I teach many of his books. You know, he's written a book on purification of the soul, purification of the heart. You know, this is what he specialized in. He was one of the students of Ibn Taymiyyah. He specialized in how to cultivate allegiance uh, to Allah and the prophet and this religion while distancing yourself from those things that are offensive to your heart and to this deen. And that's what we're going to be going over in this chapter. In this chapter, we're going to speak about the things that we can do to nurture the fitra of the heart. And again, it all begins with developing love for Allah. How do we learn to love Allah? Well, not only by learning of him through his names and attributes, but also we have to begin the journey of truth. That means learning the true teachings of Islam, not the innovations, the true teachings of Islam, because by learning the true teachings of Islam, this is how you acquire a deeper understanding of Allah's guidance. This will cause you to become clear 
as to what it is you're supposed to be doing in this world. And by studying the Quran and studying the hadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and learning about the companions, this will gain, help you gain a deeper understanding of what your purpose is and will help you in your journey. And not just that, but you have to be consistent to keep that love for Allah growing in your heart, you have to be consistent in seeking the true knowledge and understanding of this deen. So that's another way to nurture the fitra by seeking true knowledge and understanding of this religion. Also, another thing that you can do to keep your flame in your heart burning brightly is by engaging in actions of worship, doing voluntary prayers, not just the obligations, but the voluntary ones too, doing voluntary fasts, giving in charity, helping those in need. These type of actions will also nurture your fitra and it'll give you a sense of discipline and gratitude It'll make you mindful of your choices. So again, how do we nurture the flame of the fitra? Number one, by learning about Allah, learning about him through his names and attributes, and then learning his religion, studying the true teachings of Islam, the Quran and the Hadiths, and by engaging in voluntary deeds, that are actions of worship, such as voluntary prayers and giving in charity and all. And then also to keep the fitra of the heart burning bright, you need to surround yourself with a supportive Muslim community, strong practicing Muslims, because by being a part of a community that has values, an ideology similar to yours, this will help you and help your fitra in its journey back to Allah. You want an Islamic community that has study circles, that has collective worship, that it has activities scheduled during the month to help us to remember what our purpose is, to allow us to come together so we can motivate, support, and encourage each other. So that's another thing we can do to nurture the fitra, to help grow that love for Allah. Learn about him and his names, okay? Surround yourself with a strong support of the Islamic community. And also learn about the companions. That's why we emphasize uh, uh, the sealer here at Sunnah Followers. Not just the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but the stories of the heroines of Islam and the heroes of Islam. Because by learning about them and their experiences, you know, this will help to grow your devotion to Allah, your devotion to this religion and your love for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? And finally, something we can do to nurture the fitra of the heart is a lot of self-reflection. Holding yourself accountable each day, asking yourselves, am I walking the right path? Taking moments of solitude to think about your choices, the choices you make made for the week. I'm gonna talk about that during Ramadan how you should have one-on-one -on -one time with yourself and go over the uh, what, what happened in the past week, what choices you made, what actions you've done, what were your intentions when doing these things. And also by seeking forgiveness for your mistakes, forgiveness for your sins, all of this will help you to keep uh, your fitra nurtured. So, how do we cultivate and nurture the fitra once it's been awakened? Well, number one, by learning about Allah. And we learn about him through his names and attributes. 
by seeking the correct knowledge of this religion, which is based on the Quran and the Hadiths, and by engaging in actions of worship, do the voluntary prayers, do voluntary fasts, give in charity, and by surrounding ourselves with a supportive community of Muslims, and by doing self-evaluation, those four things there, that's how we keep our fitra nourished. That's how we keep it burning. And that's how we prevent ourselves from falling into sin. So now I'm gonna ask you just two questions, real short quiz. Question number one, what are some things that you can do to develop love for law? Let's hear it. What are some things that you can do to develop your love for law? Seeking beneficial knowledge, knowledge of the law, knowledge of the religion. Okay, seeking beneficial knowledge of a law and knowledge of the correct knowledge of the religion. What else? Learn about the companions, surround yourself around strong Muslims who are practicing and doing what we're doing right now, listening on the Zoom. Exactly. Surround yourself with a strong Islamic community who are practicing. Also learn about the prophet and those companions because they, they represent examples as to how to handle our problems because there is nothing that we experience in this world that they have not experienced even worse. Anything else? Learn about his names and attributes. Exactly. Learn about Allah. Learn his names and attributes. Anything else? Learn to believe what it means to worship him like in his oneness. Exactly. Do actions of worship, the voluntary deeds. So those are things that we can do to help develop love for a law. And what about this? Once that love develops, how do we keep it growing? You guys basically answered it already. How do we keep? Yeah, we just got to keep doing what we're doing to when it was lit. We got to exactly. keep doing the same exact things. Consistency. Be consistent. That Be steadfast. That's what the prophet would tell the companions a lot. You would read many different hadiths where he was advising Amir ibn al-As al or he was advising ibn Umar or ibn Abbas or even Aisha or, or even his daughter, you know, to remain uh, uh, firm. He said that he used to tell him, don't just say that you believe in Allah, remain firm upon that belief. And how do we remain firm upon that belief? By doing, you know, those actions of worship on a continuous, regular basis, by being regular and showing our love for Allah and our support for him and his deen. You know, this is how we keep it burning. MashaAllah. And I'm looking at the answers on YouTube and Facebook. MashaAllah, you guys did good. All right, so that's the lecture for today. I'm going to stop right here. Supana kalahuma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astakthiruka wa tubuilei. And I want to, I'm glad I got done early because I want to answer a question. Uh, one of the uh, brothers asked me to go over divorce. If a man divorces his wife, all he has to do is say, I divorce you. But he can only divorce her and wait a minute. And after he says, I divorce you, he can take her back, but he can only take her back twice. So say, for example, you say to your wife, I divorce you. The waiting period is three menstrual cycles or three months, whichever comes first. Within that waiting period, if the man decides that he's changed his mind, 
and he wants to take her back, he can break the divorce. Just say, I'm taking you back, okay? But if he does not take her back and those three months or the three menstrual cycles come, the marriage is over. And they can't be together again unless they remarry. Everybody got that? But you can only divorce a woman and, and take her back twice. The third time, if you say to her a third time I divorce you, there is no taking her back then. Y'all have to go through the waiting period. And once it's over, y'all separate, part your ways. You're no longer married. There is no such thing as separation in Islam. A woman and man cannot be married, but be living apart and separated. We don't do that as Muslims. That's what Kafirs do. Okay, either you marry each other. If you don't want to be together, you divorce. There is no in between. And if a man is sincere about divorcing her, if he wants your husband issues, if you issue the words of divorce and you don't want to break it, you cannot have sex with her because having sexual relations with her breaks the divorce unless you have are divorcing her for a third time. In that case, you're done. Once you say I divorce you, you packing your bags and getting out the house because you can't be together anymore. You're no longer a mahram to her. She's no longer a mahram to you. You can't touch her. It's done. Done deal. So I hope that's clear for the brother that's asking about divorce. The waiting period is three menstrual cycles or three months, whichever comes first. If you have sex with her, the divorce is broken. Unless... This is your third time saying I divorce you. If you're saying I divorce you for the third time to her, you should be saying I divorce you and packing your bags, getting out of there because y'all are no longer married. You cannot touch her. But if it's not your third time, if you have sex with her, the divorce is broken. Does everybody, I hope that's clear for the brother or sister that asked me. And marriage and divorce is a serious thing in Islam. Don't play with it. If you're not sincere about divorce, don't play with it. And there is no such thing as we marry, but we don't live together. Ain't no such thing as that. Not in Islam. Oh, no, we don't do that.